If you see this particular screenshot on your page, you will notice that from gynecology, on average 25 questions are asked. In surgery, around 25 questions are asked. Pathology plus medicine, around 30 questions are asked. So just from these four subjects, you're getting an overwhelming 75 questions. I remember being a stressed, anxious and a depressed need PG aspirant just like you in the month of January 2024. And that is because originally NEET was supposed to be in March. And with just two months of preparation left along with my 9 to 5 p.m. job, it seemed a big, big daunting task. Is BTR enough? Is marrow enough? Do I need to do DVT? When there are people preparing for NEED PG for one year, two years, three years, 10 to 12 hours daily, they are putting the hard work. Whereas I am over here just putting five to six hours daily on my NEED PG preparation. Will I be able to crack NEED PG? So that is when I decided to take a very statistical approach. Okay, a very smart approach to NEED PG that totally game changed my entire preparation. I wanted to come out the smart strategy before putting in the hard work. So one day when I was browsing through YouTube, you know, just to procrastinate, I came across this statistical analysis of NEED PG by Dr. RMD and that video totally changed my perspective towards this exam. I want you to answer my one question. Whether a question comes from surgery or it comes from anatomy, the same question carries 4 marks. The same question carries plus 4 if you get it correct and minus 1 if you get it wrong. It doesn't matter whether the question is from surgery or from anatomy, the weightage carried by the question is the same plus 4 and minus 1. So that means that you need to know from this particular subject how many questions are asked in NEED PG and therefore you can devote that much time to that particular subject. What I discovered from this video is that there are only 10 subjects that you need to master to crack NEED PG because only from these 10 subjects you will get the 75% of questions in NEED PG. You need the most important information of these 10 game changing subjects at your fingertips. You need to follow a schedule which you can stick to. I use the schedule given to me ready made by Cerebellum app and that is because they know exactly how many days to be given for how many subjects. I used to follow the live mission NEET PG classes because as you know in a live class there are no distractions. In recorded lectures you can always pause the lecture, you can go out, you can waste time, you can procrastinate, you can become lazy, you can choose not to see a video but in a live class your attention is completely focused. Dr. Gobind Raigar, Dr. Sparish Gupta, they know that your attention span is very small and that you are very lazy. So they will make sure somehow or the other by bringing in mnemonics, by telling you stories that your entire attention for those four to five hours in the day, your attention is focused on them and your course completion is their responsibility. Your concept building is their responsibility. And that is why I went through the Mission Need PG program, and though which are live classes. If you miss something, you can always check out the recorded lectures later on. One of the best parts of the Cerebellum Need PG live classes is that if you have any doubt, you can always put in the chat box. And they are always very attentive. If you have a genuine doubt, they will always answer. And other people are also trying to clarify the conceptual doubts. You can get a hold, a better hold on your concepts because somebody else is asking. And it also very really happens that when you answer grand tests and when you answer the main need PG exam, you will remember that in Dr. Gobind Rai Garg's live class, so when your student had asked this particular doubt. And you know, when you make mistakes or when you see other people making the same mistake, that is when you learn. Because if you make mistakes and somebody corrects you, you will remember the answer that they give in a much more deeper manner. It goes into your permanent memory and you will have a better recall of it. So I'll give a screenshot of the next Cerebellum Need PG 2025 schedule. You follow this and you're done with your portion. All you have to do now is to go through previous questions, annotate them into these notes, use BTR, concise it further, keep on concising over the next 2-3 revision schedules and you're done. So if Neat is telling you, boss, I'm going to ask you majority of the questions from these 10 subjects, it only is common sense that you put a major focus on only these 10 subjects in the last 10 days of your revision. I'm not saying don't study the entire 19 subjects, okay? But when you're revising, on that free day when you're like, boss, what do I study more? 
you will come back and you will pick up the rapid revision notes or you will do a custom module of any of these 10 subjects. So the 10 subjects are pediatrics, biochemistry, surgery, orthopedics, pharmacology, psychiatry, pathology, PSM, gynecology and FMT. See, this is called smart studying, okay, where you identify these 10 subjects and while you're revising, you will build your concepts in these 10 subjects. While solving GTs, you will see whether you're progressing in these 10 subjects. While discussing with your friends, you will revise these 10 subjects. But there's one more secret that you need to understand apart from these 10 subjects. And that is that every comparative exam is a pure statistical analysis. Furthermore, if you compare anatomy and forensic medicine, on average, they ask the same number of questions, around eight to nine questions. And you know, and I know, that studying anatomy takes you at least one to one and a half day. Even while revising, anatomy is such a volatile subject. But forensic medicine, on the other hand, two hours to toxicology, three hours to forensic medicine, within half a day, you're done. You're done with forensic medicine, just half a day. And it has the same weightage as anatomy. And if you see the trend, the weightage for anatomy is decreasing the weightage for forensic medicine is completely increasing over the past few years. So it makes sense to prioritize forensic medicine over anatomy. And usually if you've spoken to your seniors or to your batchmates, everyone's weak point is anatomy. So instead of focusing on all those embryology, on all those abdomen, pelvis of anatomy, which are extremely complicated, for shift your focus to these 10 subjects. Shift your focus to subjects like dermatology, psychiatry, where there are guaranteed four questions. Every year, you'll have four questions from these subjects, fixed topics in the short subjects, and that is where you'll get the maximum output for your input. One more thing is that if you see the second year subjects carry a huge amount of weightage. Now, if a question from surgery comes in front of you with some common sense knowledge of surgery that, that you've seen in the wards or you read in the textbooks, you will answer that question. You'll be at least be able to eliminate options and attempt that question. But if some tumor marker is asked in pathology, or some specific change or some very characteristic appearance is, uh, is asked to you in pathology. Unless you know it, unless you have memorized that particular concept in pathology, you will not know the answer. So if you want an edge over your competition, you should shift your focus away from the final year subjects into the second year subjects. Because a combination of pathology, microbiology and pharmacology is what is medicine. These subjects, these second year subjects are the one that will give you the base. These are the subjects that will defeat your competition if, if you master those. So these are some aspects of the smart study that I employed along with the job. So my job was a 9 to 5 o'clock and I only had about 5 to 6 hours left in the day for me to study. And therefore I developed this smart strategy in the month of January. And when the exam got postponed to June and then it became July and then it became August, this smart strategy was on steroids and that is what gave me my desired rank and hopefully my desired branch in the counseling. So you would only develop this strategy once you have data with you, once you have statistics with you and when you have someone who's going to come and tell you to study this, don't study that. Prioritize forensic medicine instead of anatomy. I'm not saying don't study anatomy, but if anatomy is your weak subject, do only the previous year topics, do only the previous year questions. So my goal in anatomy was to attempt about five to six questions out of the eight to nine questions that I asked and leave the rest three, four questions because I should not break my head wasting an entire day of rapid revision just to get those three to four questions correct. Whereas I could spend the same time revising forensic medicine and get all the eight questions of forensic medicine correct. So once again, screenshot this table, stick it onto your notice board. And when you're revising any subject, when you're planning any revision cycle, refer to this particular table. If you want a personalized revision schedule, if you want to know how I can go about studying in the last 15 days, you can watch my video on how you can use BTR as an effective revision tool. Because if you make good notes of these 10 critical subjects, then you'll be able to effectively revise in the last 10 days, in the last 15 days, and you'll be able to give a very decent shot at this NEET PG exam. See, NEET PG exam is tough, but it is also very simple. That if you follow a few basic principles of entrance exam preparation, you will be able to crack it. And I am there to clear your doubts in the comment section. So please subscribe to this channel. See the other videos on this channel if you want to know how you can incorporate rapid revision 
and BTR into your preparation. How you can go about making an effective study strategy so that for all the input that you put in your preparation, you get the desired marks, you get the desired branch in your dream college. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.